Sweet. Cheers. And now for the Monerotopia price report segment. Hey, good morning, gents. You body, how's it going? Pretty good. Good morning. Very good, very good. Chill oh, up. we got a large oh, super chat come in right now. Yeah. Non-human, <laughs> three seventy-eight tipped, ten dollars two cents. Awesome stuff. Keep the flame burning. Thank you so much, non-human, three seventy-eight. Thank you nice. so much, man. Like I said, all the so, tips will go towards uh, further development and hopefully then marketing of XMRChat.com. Good, buddy. Hopefully you guys survived the whole crash, the fake out crash. I didn't even notice, I mean, man. <laughs> I, was like, I, I literally I did not was not so part well. of it at all. <laughs> yeah, for Monero, I'm it sure you did really. too. Yeah, what Monero wasn't that big of a deal, honestly. It was kind of yeah. It was and, like well, regular day in the life of a Monero holder. <laughs> <laughs> how how crazy. low did it go for Monero? Um, we tagged like 135 or 136. So just briefly. Like, um, yeah, like you had to be, you needed notifications or something to actually be able to to leverage that or or have a an order on the order book, like a buy order. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which, um, I guess yeah, you know I mean, you can you can get onto the decentralized platforms and then put an offer out for a for a flat rate and then hope you get there. Um, so yeah, I I, I didn't do that exactly, but um, like I said, I wanted to refill my bags and I wanted a better price than where we were at last Saturday, so. Um, I was able to get, or last Sunday, I should say. So I was able to to kind of get that. So good stuff. Fantastic, man. Yeah, give us give us the full story. Um, I'll be listening in. I, I've been completely off the radar, so looking forward to uh, the forecast. Yeah, so the, main theme, the main theme last week was kind of asking: Is this the big one? Right? Have we have we come upon the time where the uh, the tail risk, demand destroying event, everything crashes? And uh, the next crisis is upon us. My thinking last week was to say, no, that that's probably not the case. Um, things did rebound to the upside in a way um, for Monero. So let's start with Monero because, you know, obviously this is Monerotopia. So why wouldn't we do that? Um, we're looking uh, here at the daily Monero chart. Maybe we can drop into the four hour here, a little bit short time frame. Oh, wow. OK, look at that. So this is a pattern that I've seen a lot. We are about to rebound to the upside. This is kind of like a stair step, like down, 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 down. Just like one red candle after another. This is an induced movement to the downside before some major um, upswing happens. Uh, at least this is this right here is a very, very clear pattern that I've seen over and over and over again. I've seen it across multiple assets. It could be stocks, gold, crypto. It doesn't matter. Um, different asset classes. When you see something stair stepping down with this kind of like, I don't know, just consistency candle over candle, whether it's the five minute, whether it's the daily, um, I've just seen this happen over and over. like I saw the I saw US dollar versus the peso do this um, like a week or two ago. And, um, and then and then it just shot up. So my guess is that um, if you failed to get in last weekend on like Sunday, or, or Monday here, if you failed to catch this right there, if you're trying to refill your bags, this would kind of be your your secondary next best next best place to do it. So um, yeah, things with the Monero chart are, are looking steady state, which they basically have been for, <laughs> for the past few years, really, um, with a few pointed uh, downside moments. But yeah, everything with the XMR price looks pretty good. Um, at least it looks stable. Um, one thing that, uh, that we can celebrate here is that we actually did, uh, relative to Ethereum, Monero actually did get back into these, into these lower bands here um, after this major, major dip down. So we've been looking to this for a long time to at least hopefully tag these ba this band area. Uh, which is something that has happened. So, um, yeah, yeah, good stuff for Monero here. Um, as usual, not too much exciting, too much crazy things happening with the price. Me and the boys um, longing XMR, as always. Say again? Me and the boys longing XMR, as always. Yep, 100%. 5x leverage, 10x leverage. Can you even long? I don't think you can long Monero with anything more than like 3x leverage. Like probably. No, you really can't. Second, I think does uh, two or three X, but not any higher than that. Maybe, I mean, maybe that's another reason why our price is relatively stable. There's just not this crazy leverage that can get liquidated on on these um, <laughs> uh, let's just call them shitcoin exchanges. Uh, excuse me, a little sip of my coffee there. Okay, so um, 
yeah, everything with there looks fine. I don't know if there's anything specific that people want to look at. Um, the divergences are still oscillating around the zero point, although somehow Poloniex has found it um, useful for some reason to to actually, for the last couple of days, be above everybody else and be above Kraken. Um, they're offering, it looks like, a 0.2 to 0.3% above spot. So if you want to go empty Poloniex, I don't know why anyone here would be on Poloniex, but, <laughs> um, you know, just, just in case. Monero versus gold has actually been moving towards the downside um, because gold is continuing to be in its bull market. So uh, I, you know, I'm perfectly fine with gold being in a bull market. I hold a decent amount of gold. I hold a lot of Monero as well. So um, yeah, this this chart again, you know, it's it's kind of like we like both of these assets. They are both freedom monies. So I I don't really mind if this chart goes up or down, but that's what it looks like temporarily. Um, we can even go take a look at the price right now. So yeah, gold is is still in this in this channel that we're talking about, this rising channel, this rising upward wedge kind of pattern. I expect gold will continue to make bullish movements. Uh, in a lot of ways, this kind of pattern can be slightly frustrating because you're like each time you're like, are we going to break out? Well, no. And you're like, are we going to break out? Well, no, not quite yet. Right. Th this pattern can continue to play out, oscillating in this area for quite some time. At some point, it probably will break out, but it's very possible that it will actually break down first because. Even though I don't think that this is going to be the big one, that this uh, this crash that we had, particularly in the stock market, um, I don't think that this was like the big one that that uh, that the show's over. Pack it in, um, you know. I think it's nearly we are nearly reaching the point that it's almost a foregone conclusion that we will be having a tail risk, demand destroying event. There's just too many things that line up, whether it's the macro and the charts and all the patterns we're looking at, or whether it's just the simple like political arena where it's like, okay, um, either they're going to steal the election <laughs> for uh, for the party in charge, or they're going to steal, uh, or or uh, the Republicans are going to win, in, in which case they're they're almost certainly going to hand Trump some kind of crisis, and they need a cover for um, for all the the financial stuff coming. Just everything lines up. We are we are due for some kind of recession, stock market crash. I just don't think this is it quite yet. So um, just to give you give you guys an idea of what I'm talking about here, the Nasdaq crashed. Uh, these are tech stocks. The Nasdaq crashed to the tune of 16%. Um, now that's that is definitely a more pronounced crash than we've had ever since the bottom. Um, let's see right here. Yeah, that was 12%. So the bottom here being uh, at the end of 2022 when things didn't that yellow line here. That's the pre-COVID highs. Um, things didn't quite make it down there. That's sort of a long-term target. Maybe it was too obvious, so things didn't quite get down there. Um, but yeah, this is the biggest crash percentage-wise that we've had for the past couple of years. Nevertheless, I mean, this is after tech stocks did a 2x, right? 100% up. So um, really, in the big scheme of things, um, things are really just continuing on their on their normal trajectory. So Thank you, Liberty Purse, right for tipping $5. Say again? Just like in the super chat. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, definitely uh, with the super chats. If you hit the wow button, that that would be totally fine because then that'll, that'll catch my attention and, and know that we've got a super chat to read. There we go. Oh, uh, yeah, good idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So here's the S and P 500. We're looking at the regression analysis. That's what the the red and the blue line is. The red is kind of like, hey, wow, we're doing really good. Um, it's not the absolute upper boundaries you can see. It's just like a. It was about as far as I could. So yeah, did that. Um, Mr. Doug. I think your I think your microphone is on, sir. I don't think he can hear us. All right, well, no, whatever. You did, yeah, no. Continue. Oh, so, oh my uh, microphone. <laughs> <laughs> right, it was that. on for like two seconds. There you go. <laughs> um. All right. So, uh, yeah. The the red. Okay. So the blue line is the S and P five hundred regression analysis. So believe it or not. Bitcoin has a regression analysis and the S and P five hundred. Is there any way to mute him, Tux? <laughs> Tux. I'm trying, but it's okay. I think I think we're good. <laughs> his okay. internet is very 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 bad right now, so it's hard to yeah. like interact with his uh, profile. There you go. Sorry, continue. I appreciate it. Um, okay, so yeah, this is the S&P 500. We're looking at the regression analysis. It actually has a beautiful regression analysis. That would be the blue line. So um, I think I've showed I've showed you I have showed you guys this chart before. Um, it's a decent time to take another look at it because of the the 16% crash. 
So it starts in uh, in 1913, and the astute observer will know why we started the chart in 1913. And the blue line is the overall regression considering all of the data. The green line is the lower boundary. And then the red line is sort of like the best I could do statistically to produce some kind of like this is the very top, tippity top um, kind of area before I, I started feeling uncomfortable going any further. Okay, regardless, the point is that you can see that on, a, on the monthly candles here, in the big picture scheme of things, the S&P 500, yeah, okay, we are above the regression analysis a good bit, but it's it's really not, like, it's not crazy, crazy high. So, um, yeah, just in general, I do think that we're going to have a bigger crash. I just don't think that that time is now. Although, you know, we have to see, like, we, I can't sing victory just quite yet. Um, although on Sunday I was saying, hey, you know, I don't think this is the big one. And then on Monday, basically stocks just went up, right? They 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 opened, especially the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ opened at the very bottom, and then the entire week it basically just went up. So it recovered by about 6% there. Okay, you know, we'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens. I just don't think this is the big one. Okay. Um, we'll take a look at some of the macro to really reinforce that. So, for example, here's the reverse repos. This is money parked with the Federal Reserve overnight, and they get the federal funds rate for doing so. And effectively, this was the big driver. Uh, this was one of the big drivers of the entire uh, bull market that we've seen thus far. Um, so they've been taking liquidity from the reverse repos, which is just money sitting idle with the Fed, and then pumping that into risk. They've been putting that into stocks and, and other risk type of assets. So what it looks to me like they did to help save this market, and this is something we've been expecting that they would do. They would save some firepower, maybe for the elections. So we had kind of leveled off there, but then starting um, starting on uh, on Monday, not really like Friday last week, um, they started pulling money out of out of the reverse repos, and this money had to have gone somewhere, right? So how much is that? That would be four hundred billion down to one hundred and two hundred eighty. So they pulled one hundred and twenty billion um, out of the reverse repos, and probably pumped that into both um, into both bonds and also into stocks. So um, yeah, it looks to me like that's that was probably a big driver of being able to sort of put a stop under the market. Um, okay, you know that that's fine. Like that's that's good for cryptocurrency in general, right? So we can take a look at the uh, at the Bitcoin chart, right? Because everyone's what is Bitcoin doing today? All of your normie friends are like, "How is Bitcoin?" You're like, "Bro, I don't own any Bitcoin," and <laughs> they're like, "What?" No, but um, okay. So yeah, Bitcoin. We had also talked about last week that um that this was probably like if you're a gambling kind of person, this is a that was a reasonable place to look for a stop. That was a reasonable place to take along. I wouldn't take leverage there. But if you're a trader, that that was a good spot to try and and to try and um, get along there and see if you can make some uh, make some profit. So yeah, if you did that, um, if you were smart, you've made twenty percent. If you've taken any of the other shit coins that were out there, a lot of those coins made 30, 40, 50 percent. So um, there was there was plenty of opportunity here across the board for people in crypto to to make a kind of um, a punt. You would call it a punt, right? We're just trying to to make a little bit of a trade here on an obvious spot. Um, that seems like a good place for some for some support. So that is effectively what happened. So probably anyone out there that does a little bit of trading is a little bit happier now, unless you just panicked. But I, I really don't think that people in the crypto industry right now, um, everyone is kind of of the mindset of buy the dip. That that mindset I feel like is um, I don't see it out there. I don't see people saying buy the dip. Um, I actually see a lot of people talking about recession, but it's just the intuition that I have about the general market psychology of cryptocurrency participants right now is such that people are like, no, 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 we're going up. This is bull market by the dip. You know, don't don't be scared. Um, so I feel like one thing I, I do think that that's happening is that this kind of don't be afraid by the dip. It's not the real crash. We might even get another one more major crash before the big one, maybe even two big crashes before the actual big one hits. And I think the idea is to reinforce the mentality of people like don't panic, sell, get into the market, buy, 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 stay long, and then the market's going to crash. And that's going to happen at a time that people don't really expect, right? It's it's going to happen at a time that people are, are saying, ah, well, they've, they've called for a crash, you know, like five times now and it hasn't happened. We just keep going up, right? That's that's when the crash is going to happen, when, when the general population, the, the plebs and all the propaganda rag news, quote unquote, news outlets, when they're telling you, you know, buy, buy, buy that's when the crash is more likely to happen, right? That you can just fleece more people. Um, but yeah, over, overall, let's take a look at the at the Z scores and see of the boomer coins, which which are the ones that are winning. I guess we could say that XRP here has been one of the bigger winners for the past month or so. Um, they especially had a, a, a thing. So they had a settlement for $125 million. 
they had this big long running court case, Judge Torres, who was the judge in that case. Um, she had done this like summary judgment thing, which was a big it was a, a big boost for XRP for Ripple. Um, they had they had won quite a lot in the summary judgment, effectively saying, listen, your network is not a security, although you guys sold investment contracts. And we talked about that multiple times here on the show. Those are two different things. Just because you sold investment contracts does not mean that your network itself is a security. And this is what like ultimately after all said and done, this is what's going to come out of, of the whole legal system, whatever at least from the United States, um, that that for the most part, very, very few of these networks are going to be ruled outright securities as a network, at least the big ones, right, the major ones. Very few of them are going to be ruled securities as a network, even though the people that sold um, a lot of those early tokens, like their pre-mine and whatnot, that is definitely going and has been ruled as selling securities. And in, in other words, selling investment contracts, right? You sold something with the promise of profit and return to people. They gave you money um, to your centralized enterprise that uh, that you were responsible, you know, for 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 those profits or, or to to try and earn those profits, right? That is an investment contract, but that doesn't make like a digital token a network itself an actual contract. Um, we won't get into the nuance of that. There will be appeals on both sides. XRP R Ripple will say you have. You have charged us too much. Um, you shouldn't be charging us anything. And then uh, and the SEC will say, no, this is wrong. The ruling was wrong, and they'll try and appeal that, whatever. Um, who cares? This this case is basically over. I doubt that that hardly anything will come out of appeal. But if you're it's wondering why is XRP... Because the SEC wanted like $2 billion, and Ripple <laughs> yeah. only has to pay like $100 million. Yeah, so they did, a, they did a really good job of spending everyone's money that... Um, <laughs> that for all the pre-mine <laughs> that they continue to sell, they still got like 50% of that pre-mine that they got in their pockets. They're going to be selling something like, it's like another billion dollars of tokens or something crazy. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> they, uh, I mean, they can, they really can sing victory on this one. They, they, they actually did pretty good here. Um, and if, if you're into the whole idea of contracts platforms, um, even if it's a, even if it's you know something like DarkFi, this is a good deal. Like this is a, this is a good deal for contracts platforms. Uh, it's especially a good deal for people that do pre mines. Uh, but we won't we won't get into that. Um, but yeah, that's that's just kind of what's going on there in terms of uh, in terms of price uh, price news, if you will. Uh, as far as everything else goes, you can see here that the Z scores aren't really showing us that that anything. There, there's not really much that's standing out too too greatly. Although we might say that TRX um, Tron is also doing relatively okay um, to compared to the other coins. Um, okay, you know whatever. Bitcoin dominance continues to do. Um, it actually has broken a key level now here as of today, uh, or as of this week. So this right here was the was the bottom point that where we draw this line specifically because of that area that was like um, in the last run up as the bull market was starting to gear up. You can see here. At the bottom of the screen, that would be um, September 9th uh, of 2020. So if we're looking at the four-year cycle, we are at very similar points to here. But interestingly, we're actually up right here. Um, this is this is basically because markets get front run. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is kind of a key area, right? This is this is a key spot to look for. We draw this line right here at the very tippity bottom of that wick. You know, you could also draw this line up here. Just know that that kind of it's a zone of resistance. Um, Oops, I accidentally dropped the wrong line. This is a zone of resistance. So if we if we zoom in here a little bit closer, this area right there, that's a zone of resistance for, for Bitcoin, um, for Bitcoin dominance. So again, I typically don't have strong opinions on where this chart goes immediately. I think it's just a foregone conclusion that in big broad bull markets after Bitcoin has broken the all-time high convincingly, not just barely accidentally <laughs> broke it by a tiny bit and then pulled back um, and then stayed languishing below the previous. Law. I'm talking like breaking 60 K or sorry, 70 K breaking 70 K and then staying above 70 K for two months straight. And then continuing just to put on gains, gains, gains on the track to hundred K when Bitcoin is on its path to hundred K that's when this chart is going to come to the downside and people are going to start speculating on the degenerate shit coins that will be led by traditional finance bros. Like make no mistake, 
those guys are like totally super duper interested in shit coins and and getting getting all that leverage and, and getting all of the hype for all the other stuff plus i mean you know got you've got the meme coins you got everything else in there that's 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 in play at this moment so um ethereum has been has relative to bitcoin has been just sucking so my hopes for this chart to actually break towards the upside um have not come to fruition it has actually gone towards the opposite is now setting at very very long term standard deviation clusters. These clusters are so long term that like so it's these guys right here. I don't even know if y'all can see that. Um, we won't take too long on this chart, but um, yeah. So at this moment, the next place that you would look, the next place that you would look is like the most obvious um, uh, support area would would be the the very very long term lower standard deviations. That's still quite a ways down, right? Like so from where we are at the moment. That would still be a 31% loss of Ethereum relative to Bitcoin. Um, you know, maybe one thing that's happening here is that that Sol is actually stealing the thunder of Ethereum. Um, maybe, maybe since the contracts platforms is really just a complex way of speculating on basically just degenerate crap, garbage, um, and, and meme coins. Um, Sol has like captured that that marketplace for doing all that, and perhaps. Perhaps it's just yet another verification that people want main chain, even if your main chain is totally centralized garbage. Um, it, maybe they, they just want main chain. They don't care about uh, about layer two. So there is a, a bunch of money in Ethereum layer two. Let's like let's not mince any words here. There's billions and billions of dollars in Ethereum layer twos. Um, but maybe Soul really is stealing some of that um, some of that use case there. So that, that could be part of the reason for this charts um, underperformance here of, from what I would maybe expect. Nevertheless, um, I think we should expect this chart to move towards the upside um, in any big bull market against Bitcoin. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see on that one. Um, but yeah, that's what that's looking like. So um, unfortunately, this was this this one I would consider a pretty big miss for myself right here. Um, so just being perfectly honest, um, Ethereum versus Bitcoin ratio. Uh, I was really really looking for this thing to break towards the upside, and that's not what has happened. It could be also the case that it was just too obvious of a trade. So um, there was just too much opportunity to wreck this chart to the downside for people like me hoping it would go up. Um, but hey, you know, I put that as a long term position. I'm not even thinking about it. So this chart can do whatever it wants. I don't care. Ethereum should hold relative, relatively OK over the long term, should hold reasonably good parity to Bitcoin, especially as the as the bull market comes. So that's just a long term play. I'm never going to touch until we get towards, you know, towards the higher the higher levels once Bitcoin is broken, all-time highs. Okay, let's take a look at privacy coins and see what they have done. Xano, we could start with Xano. It's in the top left for a reason. So Xano took a big dump, just like everybody else did, and touched uh, sort of so minus thirty percent. And it touched again like these very obvious levels. And you can you can see this chart quite. Let's go to the daily. You can see this chart fairly clearly. Man, let me look at here and see how you guys can see that. I really have to do something about my. How well you can see the wave magic on these charts. Uh, let's go to the 12 hour. That should make it better. Okay. So um, this chart is doing a thing that, again, it's got this kind of like bullish momentum. It's at the moment, it's kind of, um, we might have entered a, a place with this Xano chart for a little bit that it needs to consolidate the volatility. So you can see, right, it established these lower boundaries here, kind of touched that, and then has been just barely, barely touching it slightly higher each time. Um, but yeah, the during the crash last week, Sunday, Monday, um, it, it basically touched the place that you would expect it to and then came back up. Um, I think that would be 40 percent from the very bottom. Yeah, to about 40 percent. And then so at the moment right here, it looks like Xano's chart is going to be constrained. Uh, it's developing a pretty good constraint in this area, although because of how well it's doing during crash times, we're just barely wicked down and touched that where previously it was like hanging out down there. So that's actually reasonably good um, bullish momentum that's building. What, what you would want to see on the Xano chart is for this thing to just kind of like continue oscillating in this area, maybe wicking towards the upside occasionally. Um, that's that's really the kind of like continuing confirmation you'd want to see if you were trading Xano. Um, there's not much to say about Furo other than I really don't like the way this chart looks. You can see it had a big crash with everyone else, and then it's it hasn't even recovered, right? It hasn't even gotten back to its previous levels or even to the lower standard deviation. As we talked about last week, these are already curling down. This is this is bad price action. You don't want to see. You don't want to get on the underside of the lower standard deviations. Watch the lines curve down, touch and then come back down again. Like that just kind of spells further downside for for Firo. So that's uh, that would be my opinion on Firo. Um, Pirate Chain looks like it's it's just kind of hugging hugging the lower side of its range here. Um, who knows? It's 
So much of it was was um, not pre mined trademark, quote unquote, um, <laughs> by their by their ASIC miner that mined ninety percent in the two or three years that they didn't really advertise that they even had a coin. Um, okay, so they've got a pretty heavily centralized supply, and it's going to be hard for this thing to make big gains without some kind of like impetus. That impetus will probably come from a certain group of anarchists in a certain geographic part of the world that will get bullish on it again. And sure, this thing will probably spike up eventually at some point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, okay. Then we got Darrow here. Darrow is touching. We said, Hey, this is, this is the place that we're looking for Darrow to touch. If you wanted to go for a long, that would be a good spot to give it a try. I don't like Darrow hasn't let's go to the daily. Darrow hasn't really recovered to any significant fashion. Um, although you might be able to call this a W bottom, right? This looks a lot like a W pattern. So this thing could could potentially recover. <laughs> I don't want to say that because it's it's just hard, man. When something has fundamentally screwed up so bad, like it's just hard to think that that's going to recover with price. But there, you know, nothing goes down in a straight line. So you might take a dare along here, but don't don't cry to me if it doesn't work out for you, though. Like <laughs> that's not the kind of risk I would be that I would be willing to take personally. Um, ah, okay. Anyways, um, Zcash, eh, I don't care about Zcash. Forget about those guys. Okay, other than that, um, let's see. Check my notes here. We're gonna well, get Zcash, some... Zcash has done a done a lot, right? They they okay. Zcash has done a lot in terms of like um, research, right? Done a lot in terms of um, developing new technology. Zk proofs are being used in a lot of different places, not just in Zcash. I mean, that's that's cool, I guess. No, no, I just meant a lot, a lot of price action. Really. A lot of price. Yeah, like it's been pumping a lot recently, and I still can't believe I got I picked up some Zcash for like I know this is gonna be heresy, but I did pick up Zcash for like sixteen dollars yeah. a few months Dude. ago. Awesome. You're and now it's 40. I know. That's like, what's up with that? Uh, it's crazy. I guess it's having a, a little bit of a resurgence, um, even though like transaction counts are incredibly low. Nice trade, man. That that If you picked it up at $16, that means that you caught it. Like, I mean, right at the bottom of that wick. That is, that's a beautiful trade, bro. Good job. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Oh, all right. So I guess maybe we should cover Zcash more. Yeah, I mean that was a real. Um, real yeah, I feel like it's being. Off. Yeah, we. I I think we'll get it, guys. I think I'm I'm delayed here, huh? I think I'm delayed. Sorry about that. No, I that. think you're okay. Um, but I think we'll get into it into the news. But it feel it feels like Zcash is being uh, marketed and, and a little bit at this point. I don't know if anybody else getting that sense. I don't know if you guys saw the recent article, the Zuko article. I did. Yeah, we'll, but we'll, we'll cover uh, that. News. We'll go over that news. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm interested to hear that because if they're trying, but it, I mean, it feels know, like there's a strategic pumping, like a strategic pump that's happening. If that's the case, and they're trying to to really market this thing, and you know, they're probably trying to take advantage of the of the Monero delistings, and be like, "Well, we're not delisted." Yeah, I wonder why. Yes, they're um, simultaneously but... shitting on Monero in the article in a way <laughs> that's totally not true. So yeah, we'll. I'll I'll go over that in the the new segment for sure because it's probably the most interesting thing this week out of the price action stuff. But yeah, yeah. I mean they gotta they gotta find the next round to dump their bags on. So all right, um, cool. All right, we'll wrap up with a little bit of um, a couple macro events here. So we got some new unemployment numbers, um, and unemployment continues to spike. It's called the SOM rule. S H uh, sorry S A H M. The SOM rule is once unemployment has has risen beyond a certain level. Um, or, or spiked up beyond a certain level that it's a foregone conclusion that a recession is coming and that more unemployment is on the way. Um, so yeah, we got new numbers and you can see, so from here, let's drop a vertical line there. All right, so right there was the previous numbers and then on Friday we got we got this last numbers up here. So that's another 0.2 in increase in unemployment. So anyways, the point is this chart continues to move towards the upside. This is again why I say we're, we're we're nearly reaching that foregone conclusion point that a big a big event is coming here. Um, uh, nothing else happened here since last week on that chart. Uh, the bonds bonds have um, they they sort of dropped off sharply as the market sold off and then they've recovered a little bit. the The big thing down is down here, where bonds are overall almost not inverted now. It depends on which ones you want to look at, obviously. The red line goes back further because you didn't always have like all of the increment of bonds. I can't remember exactly which one, but I think the red line is like the 10 year, the one year, maybe the five year. 
and maybe the third year. I think there was only like four of them that go back all the way to, um, oh, uh, how far back is that? All the way back to 1962. So um, wait a second. Maybe it's the pink line. Okay, I'm sorry. Actually, it's the pink line that that's uh, <laughs> the pink line is the bonds. There's only like four bonds that go all the way back to 1962. The red line is, is basically all of them. So, um, yeah, anyways, the point is that uh, we saw bonds becoming nearly almost not inverted now, um, depending on how you want to look at it. So that's again, that's that's part of our our criteria here that we're looking at. Once this these lines start to spike towards the upside and bonds start to spike towards the downside, both of those things happening happening simultaneously tells us that we are getting close and that uh, and that you should be um, battening down the hap hatches. If you are in the, um, so here's an idea. If you're in traditional markets at all, what you can do is take a binary option, right? Cause you don't want to take a, like a futures position, um, and expose yourself to going bankrupt, right? Because you can actually, if you, if you take a derivative or, or futures position on your own personal name, um, and that thing goes the wrong way, you can literally, they can go after all of your assets. So that's kind of how that works. So if you have a corporate entity doing it, okay, you might be willing to sacrifice your corporate entity. Um, or you can do something like take a binary option that's far out of the money um, that predicts a big crash in the market. And um, and you can you can put like 1% of your net onto that binary option and then just hopefully, you know, wait wait for it to play off uh, play out uh, when the market crashes. So that's one thing you can think about. You know, obviously talk to your financial advisor. I'm taking phone calls. Just kidding. I'm not your financial advisor. Not unless you pay me a lot more, Monero. Um, just kidding. All right. Anyways, guys, so that's about it. Uh, Monero transactions are flat and there's nothing to talk about on this chart. 25,000 is what we're looking at. Um, yeah, things have recovered. Probably things will continue to recover through next week. There is the last thing. There's something happening next week. Oh, there's some. No oh, uh, we get we get inf inflation numbers ne next week. So I think on Wednesday. Maybe Friday. I can't remember. Next week, we get new inflation numbers. So uh, the Fed is like, if we continue to get good data, we will we will decrease the interest rate. Um, so I think probably if if inflation numbers come down within next week, right, if we see these numbers drop again, especially if they beat expectations, then expect the markets to pump because everyone's going to say, oh, inflation came down. That means the Fed is definitely going to lower rates in the next meeting, which is September. Um, and so, right. And plus, there's still the reaction bounce off the bottom. Um, so next week, like there could be some opportunity to trade that if you like wake up at the right time and then you're like hitting refresh on, <laughs> uh, on your screen so that you can see what those numbers look like. And then you could take a long, okay, whatever. Um, so that's the price report today. Um, hopefully it has been useful for some DJ traders out there. Peace. All right. Thanks as always, buddy. I don't think they're going to reduce the interest rate. You don't think so? so I don't think they can. They 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 they've been so the last meeting Jay Powell talked about um talked about oh, yeah. he he said that they'll that it's likely uh, he didn't say it's likely but he's he's definitely talking like hey you know we think it'll be appropriate to reduce interest rates we're going to be data driven we can't promise next meeting but it does seem like that he's talking dovish now he's like very clearly like opening he's not giving the four guidance of a rate drop but he's very like clearly opening that possibility maybe it's just talk yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, it would be nice. It'd be nice for sure. A lot of people wanting to get into a house um, that are waiting to get into a house. Yeah, that's true. Very much I, true. I even know there's people out there that are currently buying houses on the anticipation. So they're, they're just going to... That they're, it'll be dropped and then they can refinance immediately. Uh, exactly. They talk <laughs> about reducing. Um, they, they probably would only reduce it by like 25 basis points. So a quarter of a percent. But yeah, that's not, not a lot. But that's crazy. It's not a lot, but that would also kind of that would kind of break the seal, if you will, right? It's probably the like the the fifth seal. I don't remember which one of Revelations, but um, <laughs> no, like that's that sort of breaks the seal of them stair stepping down. Like that's the beginning of the end, right? That's the lead into the to the next crisis is them starting to lower rates. Um, you know, it could be something that happens over the course of six six to nine months, but um. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, there, there's people right. actually buying houses out there right now there's under the stuff. anticipation they can refinance sooner. Soon. Okay, guys, I'll hand it back over to you. Thanks so much, Tux. Thanks, Doug.